Hello everyone. I am Dr. Shobha Badiger. I am a consultant pediatric hemato-oncologist and a bone marrow transplant physician. I work in Mazumdar Shaw Medical Center, a unit of Narayana Health, Bangalore. I take this opportunity to talk about bone marrow transplantation in children. Children means every person at the age of 18 and below 18 years. So what is bone marrow transplantation? Bone marrow transplantation is a procedure, it is a medical procedure wherein healthy stem cells are transfused to a patient with the intention of curing them from the disease. Now this bone marrow transplantation can be two types depending on from where we get the stem cells. One autologous, the other one is allogenic bone marrow transplantation. In the autologous bone marrow transplantation, the stem cell is donated by the patient himself when the marrow is healthy. Marrow is where the stem cells are produced and this patient gets treated for their disease and then the stem cells that are stored beforehand is transfused to the patient to help them with a speedy recovery. In the allogenic bone marrow transplantation, the stem cells are donated by another healthy person who is called a donor. The patient himself undergoes treatment for the disease. With a pre-planned uh, timetable, the patient receives high-dose medicines called chemotherapy, after which the stem cells from the donor is collected and transfused to the patient. Both the autologous as well as the allogenic bone marrow transplantation is given as a treatment to cure the patient of various diseases. The autologous bone marrow transplantation is usually used as a rescue from high-dose chemotherapy for conditions like neuroblastoma, which is a tumor of nerves, medulloblastoma, which is a tumor of the brain, and sometimes bone tumors like Ewing's sarcoma. In conditions like cancers, blood cancers, and some of the non-cancerous conditions, the marrow of the patient is unhealthy, and therefore we need a healthy donor to donate the stem cells. The cancers that can be treated with allogenic bone marrow transplantation in children are high risk leukemia that is a high risk blood cancer or a blood cancer that has come the second time in a very short period of treating the first uh, incidence of the cancer and some non-cancerous conditions like genetic disorders like thalassemia, bone marrow failure syndromes like aplastic anemia, pure red cell aplasia and some primary immunodeficiency disorders where the children's immunity has been reduced to such an extent that survival of the child becomes risky. Now what are the type of donors we select in allogenic bone marrow transplantation? The donor can be their own family member which is a matched related donor or it can be an outside donor. We do a test called HLA typing wherein the antigens on the cells of the uh, donor and the patient is uh, matched. If it is matched, then it is called a matched donor transplantation. If it is not matched, it is called a mismatched bone marrow transplantation. The matched donor transplantation can be done with a donor who is their own sibling or a related donor when it is called a matched sibling donor or matched related donor. In those patients where we don't have a matched sibling or a matched related donor, the donor can be obtained from worldwide registries, including India wherein voluntary uh, donors would have registered themselves to donate the stem cells. This is called matched unrelated donor. Sometimes we have umbilical cord stored in umbilical cord blood banks, wherein the cord will be matched against cells of the patient. And if there is a match, then we can use this. And this kind of a transplant is called cord blood transplantation. In some patients, we don't get a matched donor at all, either in the family or in the registry or in the umbilical cord blood bank. In such patients, we use a half match donor, which is usually the parent. As a rule, most of the times, the one of the parent is always a half match, HLA match, and we can use one of the parent as a haplotransplant donor. So this bone marrow transplantation procedure is curative for the conditions that I already told, that is the recurrent blood cancer, high risk blood cancer and various genetic disorders like thalassemia, aplastic anemia, pure red cell aplasia, primary immunodeficiency disorder, adrenal leukodystrophy and so on. Initially, we test the donor for the eligibility of donating the stem cells. That is some of the viral disorders that can affect the recipient will have to be eliminated in the donor and hence we do the necessary blood test. 
and we also do their routine blood tests like complete blood count, liver function test, kidney function test to make sure that the donor is healthy enough to donate the stem cells. Once this is ensured, we counsel the patient and the donor about the procedure in detail. The donor will not go through any complications because of this procedure. Initially, the donor will have to receive three to four days of injection called growth factor, which is given in the skin, just like how diabetics take insulin. On the fourth or the fifth day of this injection, the stem cells is collected. The procedure of collection is called peripheral blood stem cell collection or bone marrow harvest. In the peripheral blood stem cell collection, we insert two cannulas, one in left hand, the other one is in the right hand. Through one hand, blood is drawn, it goes through a machine called apheresis machine and the stem cells are drawn by this machine and the remaining cells, the red blood cells, platelets and the remaining white blood cells are transfused back to the donor. This is called peripheral blood stem cell collection. Bone marrow harvest is a procedure which is done under general anesthesia wherein the donor undergoes anesthesia so that they don't sense any pain and then the cells are collected by using needles on the hip bone. From this procedure, we collect stem cells into bags called stem cell bags and these cells are collected and then transfused directly to the patient. The mode of transfusion to the patient is just like any other blood uh, transfusion and it does not involve any surgical procedure. For the donor, because of general anesthesia, due to the current techniques and the recent advances, there is hardly or almost zero complications involved in the collection of the cells. The donor can be uh, discharged the very same day if they are fit or the next day after a period of observation and they can resume their normal activities without any hindrance. Once this is done, almost always, 99% of the times, we don't need the donor anymore unless the recipient rarely in need of a second transplant. This is the donor part. As far as the patient is concerned, the patient will receive a pre-planned schedule of chemotherapy which will last for five to seven days depending on the condition. And after this chemotherapy, the patient will receive the stem cells in the form of blood transfusion. And after this, the patient will be kept under observation for a period of three to four weeks in a unit called bone marrow transplantation unit, which is a isolated unit with one attender and one dedicated nurse for the patient. During this period, the patient will receive various medicines to prevent infections, to prevent complications due to the drugs, to prevent any graft associated complications. By the end of three to four weeks, 80 to 90 percent of the patients will find the donor cells growing in their body. This is assessed by what is called complete blood count, which is done almost every day. And once the count starts coming up, we call it engraftment. Once the patient has the donor cells engrafted, we shift the patient to the ward and continue the medications in the form of oral medications. And once the patient and the parent has educated themselves about the medicines and the kind of care they have to give to the patient at home, and when we are convinced that there are no complications that need to be treated in the hospital, we discharge the patient. So the duration of stay in the hospital is around one month. Sometimes it may extend to one and a half month. During this period, the patient may experience vomiting, may experience nausea, hair fall, and loss of appetite. These are complications that can be easily managed or even prevented. And if they do occur, they are temporary. Once the engraftment happens, these complications subside. Most of the children recover rapidly once the engraftment happens. The other complications which are much more serious are life-threatening infections which can happen if not detected early and hence the patient is kept under close observation 24 into 7 in the hospital till the engraftment happens. The other complications is the adjustment between the body of the patient and the graft cells, that is the stem cells. If the body of the patient recognizes the donor cells as not self and rejects the uh, donor cells, then it is called a primary graft failure. This can happen even before the engraftment happens, which is primary graft failure, or at a later period, any time after the transplantation, which is called secondary graft failure. To prevent this, we would have taken necessary precautions even before starting the transplantation. Many times the graft cells recognize the patient's body as not their body and can start a reaction called graft versus host disease. 
This usually affects the rapidly multiplying cells like the intestine uh, lining, the mouth lining, the skin, the uh, liver cells and extremely rarely it can also affect the lung and the brain and the marrow. When this happens, the severity can extend from stage 1 to stage 4. Stage 1 and stage 2 or grade 1 and grade 2 are mild and can easily be managed even on an OPD basis. But stage 3 and stage 4 requires prolonged hospitalization and dedicated medications to treat this problem. In the mad sibling donor transplantation, this complication of graft versus host disease is less when compared to half match transplantation or and matched unrelated transplantation. To prevent this, we do special procedure called alpha beta depletion. The success rate of bone marrow transplantation in non-malignancy condition when done at an appropriate time is almost 80 to 90 percent. In malignant condition, the success rate is around 50 to 60 percent depending on the disease that we are treating, the stage of the disease and the prior treatment and the general condition of the patient. In general, bone marrow transplantation is curative to various cancers and various non-malignant conditions, genetic as well as acquired. I hope this talk will give you enough awareness about bone marrow transplantation and I hope all children will get help to get access to this treatment. Thank you.